Hi everybody, I'm Amy and recently, uh, today I've been uh, defrosting my freezer. So I've got lots of frost and ice all in these bowls and I'm going to do some ice snow dyeing uh, of this yarn. Here I've got, I've got 100 grams of uh, four ply uh, superwash merino, tusha silk and silver stellina and I've got two 10 gram uh, skeins of the same yarn. These have been soaking in um, water and vinegar for a couple of hours. So, right. much of this yarn exposed as possible. So let's start put, putting on the frost and the ice. Now, as this, I have been defrosting my freezer so there are little bits of food in here, little bits of crumbs but I'm not worried about that. That can easily rinse those out at the end. I just wanted to get as much of this as I could while I was defrosting. I've got most of this covered. I'm not too worried about the little bits around the edge. That will all just add to the effect of this yarn. Now, I've got my I've got my gloves on. I've made sure I've got dry hands, and I've got my mask on. So I'm going to be using uh, four different acid dyes in powder form. Now, the first one I've got here, I've got well, I've got frozen, uh, purple pop, uh, radioactive, and uh, sour apple. I'm going to be using on this. So first of all, I'm going to go with frozen. And I'm just going to start sprinkling these on to the, the on here, making sure that everything is covered as much as I can. Oh, oh, this is a very, very pretty blue. Next up is radioactive. And put this here. Now I know this one is a fluorescent colour, so you should be able to see it under a black light. That should be cool if I had a black light. Next is sour apple. Sprinkle. You can see as the ice is starting to melt, the dyes that I've already put on, you can see they're starting to uh, spread out. And last is purple pop. This is another fluorescent colour. All right, now I'm just going to cover this up and leave it to melt completely. Once, once it's all melted, I can heat set this as uh, animal based fibres uh, also need the heat for the acid, for the acid dyes to set onto the yarn. It's been about six hours and a lot of the ice and frost has melted. There's still a fair bit to go so I'm going to leave this just overnight and hopefully it will all be melted in the morning. It's the next morning. Uh, I started this approximately 20 hours ago and as you can see all the ice is now melted. All that needs to be done is to heat set this dye now. Uh, I'm going to try low immersion for the bottom uh, yarn and Possibly try and steam set this. Ooh, ooh, it's so pretty. All these colours. I only want to try and save these colours. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try heat setting this, and then I can wa uh, wash it and hang it out to dry. I decided to set these all on the hob, uh, just doing my normal low immersion setup. Uh, as you can see, I have added a couple of extra skeins of yarn to uh, soak up the extra dye. I haven't actually. Timed how long they've been on here because I've been doing other things with my children So I, th I think they've probably been at a simmer for about half an hour All I'm going to do now is just turn off the heat let them cool down and then I can wash them and hang them out to dry And here is all of the finished yarn the, this is the uh, big skein that we dyed. This is the mini skein that I put in while heat setting this one. And then we've got these two here, were the two that were underneath the crate when ice dyeing that. 
and these two were the extra mini skeins that I put in as yarn mops when heat setting these ones. So I'm going to just go through these individually. We'll start with this 100 gram skein of yarn. Now because I had to heat set this uh, using low immersion instead of steam setting, uh, the colours did blend into each other and bleed into each other a little bit because I had to pour water all over, all over it. But I think it's still stunning. I love how the blue here has sort of faded and blended into the green and then yellow. And then we've got this nice sort of uh, dusty, dark, pinky purple. We've got some nice bright pink patches, some nice purple patches. Coming around into a bit of orange, some more, some nice bright, bright yellow. And then you see it's a little bit more of this dusty dark pink purple and then backgrounds to the lovely yellow fading into blue. I'm very, very happy with how this turned out. And then we've got the little mini skein, which I put in to um, just soak up some of the extra dye as this was setting. The way I put this yarn in the tin was that I had purple at the top and then the, so they had the purple pop at the top and then it was the green sour apple, the yellow radioactive, and then the uh, blue frozen at the bottom. So you can see it's picked up a lot of the pink here from purple pop, and then it sort of fades down into the, the greens and blues. It's all sort of mixed together there, which has created a beautiful fade on that mini skein as well. Moving on to the yarn that I had underneath the crate, which picked up a lot of the dye that dripped through as the ice melted. We've got the first two over here. These were the two underneath and with these ones you can see it's got a, they've got a little bit more colour. They've got, uh, green, they've got greens on this one and some lovely sort of orangey, uh, orangey patches on this one. And then we've got these two which I added in as yarn mops as I was heat setting these. And again, it's uh, the orange that has certainly been picked up a lot on these ones. These were dyed, all of these were dyed originally, so they, I didn't dye these from white. I think these two were the orange ones and these two were the sort of dark grey ones. And that sort of come through on the colours that are in here. Uh, I really like the green that's picked up on this one, which was the one underneath the crate. But this one's got some lovely blues in it and it's created a really nice sort of muddy colourway, I think. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please leave a comment as well. Let me know what you thought of this video. Um, I aim to produce a new dyeing tutorial every Monday. I like to experiment with different methods, different colours, uh, different fibre types, so hopefully there'll be something new in every video that I publish. Thank you so much for watching.